Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. I do want to encourage you to check out our other podcasts. Today, I am highlighting the amazing world of radio at amazing.greatdetectives.net. The series has been on hiatus since the end of last month, but we are actually returning tomorrow with a special episode honoring the late great James Earl Jones. And we'll be playing a 1960s radio jam in which he appears. And we have done these with a wide variety of different stars, including Ed Asner, Betty White, Tony Bennett. And of course, then you have our regular summer series that are chosen by our Patreon supporters most recently, our Batman villains of old time radio, as well as some spring series, holiday specials. There's a lot to listen to. You can check it out at the Amazing World of Radio website, amazing.greatdetectives.net. You can find links to all of our podcasts at uh, our main page at greatdetectives.net. Well, now it is time for this week's episode of Bulldog Drummond. The original air date on this one is April the 21st, 1948. The title is Devil Flats, but it's also known as Ghost Town. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Out of the fog, out of the night, and into his American adventures comes Bulldog Drummond. The ghost town, a stark and desolate corpse lies bathed in a shroud of pearl-gray moonlight. This is a place dead and forgotten. But some say it is not altogether forgotten. Some say that on moonlit nights, when the wind blows in from the desert, a solitary figure in black vengefully prowls the sand-swept street. In his hand, there is a heavy rope tied into a noose, and at his side, there walks a wolf dog. Some say that on such nights as you stand on this hill overlooking the town, you can see the man in black stalk the streets. And they say if you keep your ear to the wind, you can hear his animal howl a hymn of death. Uh, young sir... As soon as we get over this here ridge, we'll get your look-see at Devil Flex. Well, they told me back in Purple Creek, you know quite a bit about that ghost town, Zach. No, plenty. More than any critter in these parts. And by the way, young fellow, what you say your name was? Evans. Carl Evans. Evans, that's right. Yeah, that reporter fellow from the East. Eh? Teacher writer for the Herald Sunday Supplement. Funny. I thought you said you was one of them reporter fellows. Uh... Never mind. It amounts to the same thing. Now, we were talking about Devil Flats. Just what do you know about this ghost town? What do I know about it? You joking, young fella? I know just about every darn tootin' thing to do. Yes, sir. Lived there myself back in the old prospecting days. Oh, as I explained to you, I'm out here to do an article about the legend. Legend? I don't get you. Well, that fairy tale about the ghost of Devil Flats. What you say your name was, young fella? Evans. Carl Evans. Now, you look here, Mr. Evans. 
There ain't no fairy tale, no three. Oh, you believe it too, huh? She is believing, really, Jim Feather. You're going to tell me you saw the black ghost walking the deserted streets in the moonlight? Yes, I sure did. With my own two eyes, it was red and rain, just like I told them other reporter fellers that come along this way. Uh, don't forget that day back in 83 when they strung Red up in front of the old nugget saloon. Red stands right up there with that noose around his leather neck and he yells, I'll get you. I'll come back to help me. I'll come back and string you all up. So, Red Moran has come back from the dead. Just like he said he would. And that crazy half-wolf dog of his comes back with him. Oh, oh, there she is, young fellas. There's devil flats just head yonder. So that's where Red Moran's ghost and the wolf dog was. Hey, maybe you wouldn't be so gush darn cute about it, young fellas, if you come as close to Red's noose as I did. Yes, sir, about six months ago, I come out here to Devil Flats to mosey around. I was standing near the old nugget saloon. There's a night just like this one. Oh, was poor and the wind was blowing him from the desert. What happened? Well, uh, like, like, like I say, I'm standing by the nugget when I hear this here funny howling sound, like the wolf was. I turn around, and then I see Red Moran and that dog of his coming up the street. I start to run, young fella, and all the time Red and the dog is gaining and gaining, and Red is throwing that noose out at me like a rattler's tongue. I get to my car just in time and scoot out of Devil Flats as fast as a Texas Jack. Let's <laughs> go. Yeah, made my blood freeze. That's what it did. Well, you sure here we are. Oh, come on. I want you to show me around. Oh, not me, young fella. I ain't getting out of this car. All right, then. You wait here while I... Uh, there? there it is. It's dark. Oh, come on, get in. We're going back. Oh, don't be a fool. That's only a coyote. Yeah, you get in this car pronto, young fella, or I'm going back without you. Yes, sir, that's no coyote. That's Red's dog. He's coming for us with that noose of his. Now, wait a minute, Zach. Uh, are you getting in? I'm telling you for the last time, are you getting in? After I see what a ghost hangman looks like. All right, young fella. It's your own funeral. I, I warned you. Like I say... It's your own girl, yes, sir. Come back for me in the morning. I'll be waiting. Oh, who's there? Who is that there? Who are you? Oh, uh, nothing right now, thank you. I'm looking for someone. They told me I'd find him here at the Silver Grill. You'll find the whole town of Purple Creek here in the grill on Saturday night. Who are you looking for, mister? A man named Zachary Grant. Zach? Yeah, he's here every night. Say, aren't you the stranger rolled in this afternoon? Well, I suppose I am. You're that detective guy they told me about down at the hotel. Now, uh, what was that name again? Drummond. Yes, yes, that's right. Captain Drummond. Well, welcome to Purple Creek. I'm uh, Sam Wilson. I run the grill. Mr. Wilson, I'm anxious to have a chat with its grind. Oh, it's about that city newspaper man disappearing? That's what you want to talk to Zach about, isn't it? Yes, yes, that's what it is. So, it will be kind enough to point out, Mr. Grimes, to me. Sure, sure. Ah, uh, he's in the back there at the last table over there in the corner. Thank you. But you ain't going to get much talking out of Zach. Not in the condition he's in. Well, the table in the corner. Thank you very much, Mr. Wilson. Well, is, uh, is Grimes here, sir? Yes, Jenny, it's that table in the rear. Good. Now we can begin to swing into action. Mr. Grimes? Huh? Well, uh, my name is Drummond. I... I can Zach Grimes, he used to call me. Sit down, Jennings. Uh, Grimes, I want to talk to you. Talk? About Carl Evans. 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 Uh, he was a nice young fellow. 
But he wouldn't listen to old Zach, so Red Grimes got him. The same ridiculous story, Captain Gunning. Grimes, I promised Carl Evans' wife I'd do everything possible to find out what happened to her husband. That's why I've come to you first. I'll tell you what happened to that young fellow. Red Moran got him. That's what happened. Red Moran got him out at Devil Flats. You were the last one to see Carl Evans before he disappeared. I warned him, but that young fellow wouldn't listen. Yes, we read the report of your version of the affair. When you returned to Devil Flats the next morning, Evans was gone. There wasn't a trace of him. Grimes, I understand you run sightseers out to Devil Flats. So, just as soon as we get you feeling a bit better, you're taking Denny and me out there to find out just what happened to Carl Evans. And I sincerely hope that your ghostly friend is on hand. I'm rather looking forward to meeting Red Moran. Come on, Denny. Let's get him out of here. Oh, that must be it. Just ahead, sir. Yep. Ed still reflects. You say, Zach, that it was just such a night as this when you took Carl Evans out there. The moon was riding right where it is, and the wind was blowing in from the desert just like this. Well, then, Denny, I judge, according to Zach, that conditions are just about perfect for Moran and his dog to make their extra partners appearance. Yeah, that ghost and his new dog. Really, sir, what nonsense. You gents will leak them words, I'm warning you. Red Moran is there and Devil Flats are waiting. He's waiting there to use that noose again. My neck feels rather secure. Uh, you wait and see. You wait and see if Zach Grimes ain't a telling the gospel truth. Why are we stopping here? Well, this is where that young fellow Evans got out. Oh. When Zach drove off, I saw him head down that way to the Nugget Saloon. Well, we'll take the same course. Come on, Denny. Yes, sir. Well, Zach... Oh, I'm not going in there. You gents won't let well enough alone, but I'm telling yes, you... Yes, yes, we know. But I'm sure three of us are quite capable of coping with a ghost. Come on, sir. Come on. But, but I... I'm coming. He's quite insistent in message of this sort. I advise you to come along if you request. Uh, ah, that's more like it. Now let's get started. The Nugget Saloon is down this street. Yes, sir, the nuggets at the corner there. The signs are hanging out front. That's the sign they strung Red Moran from. It was back in 83, Moran jumped the claim. That's what they strung him up for. Now he's come back just like he said he would. Uh, you know, Captain Drummond, there's something quite eerie about this place. Now, don't tell me, Denny, that that ghost story is getting there. Well, no, sir, not exactly, but just look at this town. It's, it's just a graveyard. You, you must admit, sir, if they're worth as things as ghosts, this would be an appropriate habitat for them. Denny, I really think you're starting to eat the words you spoke a while back in the car. I warrant you. Well, to be frank, sir, I do feel a bit choked up. I, I'll be glad when we start back for Purple Creek. Here's the nugget saloon. What do we do now, sir? Have a look inside. For what? Well, according to popular legends... Ghosts usually loiter around the scene of the hanging. Come on. Open the door, Denny. Yes, sir. Now inside. Oh. Nothing in here, sir. Thank goodness. Denny. What is it, sir? Look over there. That. What? A body hanging from the rafter. Come on. Your flash. Captain, his face. Look. Yes, then. It, it's Carl Evans. Zach, come here. I want you. Zach. He's not here, sir. Come on. He's he disappeared. But where to? Look down the street the way we came, Denny. There's your answer. His car's gone, too. <laughs> Captain John, that, that howl, it's, it, it's the wolf dog. Moran's dog. We're trapped here, sir. We're trapped. I'll return in a moment to continue our story. Captain Drummond, that that howl, 
me. It's more than dog. We've trapped here, sir. We've trapped. Now, take it easy, Denny. But he's coming to get us, just as Jack said he would. We won't get out of here alive. Denny. He'll hang us, just as he did Carl Evans. Stop it. But we haven't a chance. We haven't a Denny, for heaven's sake, get hold of yourself. That's just a coyote, that's all. Nothing's going to happen to us. I have the automatic ready. Oh, you, you can't fight ghosts with that, sir. Try to understand, Denny. Evans in there. That wasn't the work of any ghost, believe me. We're perfectly safe, I assure you. Look, look, sir. There in the moonlight coming toward us. Look, look. What? It's true. He has come back from the dead. But it's not possible. I just can't. Oh, and his dog. They're, they're coming for us. They're coming for us. Very well, let them come, Denny. Well, what, what are we going to do? We'll just have to take our chances. We'll see what effect steel bullets have on ghosts. Captain Good morning, Mr. Wilson. Where in the Sam Hill did you come from? A couple of the boys went out to Devil Flats last night to look for you after Zach came back without you. Yes, for last night, Denny and I came face to face with the ghosts of Devil Flats. What? Or rather, what was supposed to be the ghosts of Red Moran and his dog. I don't get you. Red got away, but I got his dog. Hey, what are you talking about, anyway? The dog is quite dead this time. I still don't follow you. It wasn't a ghost dog at all. It was a real live canine. At least up to the point where two bullets from my gun and its body. The driver who picked us up last night was kind enough to go back to Devil's Flat so we could take the dog to the sheriff's office. Along with Carl Evans. Evans? You, you found him? Yes. Hanging from a rafter in the saloon at Devil's Flat. And as I proved to Denny, Evans' death was not the work of a ghost but that of a living, breathing murderer. I imagine his body was hanged there to add vivid proof to the spirit legend. Well, uh, what do you figure could be the reason for that? That's why I came here to see you, Mr. Wilson. I thought perhaps you could give me the reason. Me? Well, why, what would I know? It's about the dog. What about it? I inquired about town this morning when I returned from Carter City. The dog was a large hound, quite a bit of wolf bred into it. It was brown with white markings on the chest and ears. Mike. That's right, Mr. Wilson. Your dog, Mike. So that's what happened to Mike. That explains that. Explains what? Well, Mike disappeared about seven months ago. He said Mike ran away. Yeah, but somehow I knew he was lying. Mike wouldn't run away, not that dog. He took care of the dog for me. Yeah. So that's how he took care of him. Who are you talking about, Wilson? Yeah, Zach Grimes. That's who I'm talking about, Captain Drummond. I paid that tricky old liar to watch after him for me. I see. Well, thanks, Wilson. I'll be getting along. I uh, have to see a man about a dog. Yeah? What did... Oh, good morning, Zach. Uh, Captain Drummond. <laughs> He looks as though he's seen a ghost, doesn't he, sir? Two, to be exact. You're... you're alive. No thanks to you. Red Moran didn't get you. You can stop the act. We're on to you. Come on in, Denny. Well, what do you want? We're going to have a little talk about several things, Zach. First, there's the matter of Mr. Wilson's dog, Mike. Why did you steal the animal? Steal? What are you talking about? The gush down, four-legged critter ups and high tails at one night, just like I told Sam Wilson. You're rather adept at storytelling, aren't you, Zach? So help me, that's just what the barman did. Uh, Captain Drummond is anxious to hear your version of Carl Evans' murder. Yes, after you skipped out on us last night, we found Evans' body hanging from a rafter in the Nugget Saloon. Hanging? As if he didn't know, sir. It was Red Moran who done it. That red is an ordinary cast just shake. Can you get just it? a minute? Let, let go of my arm. What is it, sir? This watch on Zach's wrist interests me, Denny. Very much. Let, let go. Let go. Just as soon as I unstrap this watch. There we are. That timepiece is mine. Give it to me. Give it to me. What about the watch, sir? Here, Denny. Look at the inscription on the back of it. From Anne with love, 1941. Anne, sir. That's Mrs. Evans' name. Yes. And this is Carl Evans' watch. What? Well, I didn't know that that very timepiece belonged to that young Evans feller. It's a gospel truth, I didn't. I just thought that Dirty Critter was being nice to old Zach Grimes, that's all. Who are you talking about, Zach? Well, the Dirty Critter will give me this timepiece. 
I just thought he was being nice. Who gave it to you? Come on, tell me. Uh, sure, I'll tell. It was that... Down, Danny. The window. He's gone, then. Did you get a look at him, sir? No. Zack? Zack? I'd better get a doctor, sir. No, no. It's no use, sir. He's dead. All right, Denny, let's go. Devil flat. Well done. I'm... What are you doing in this car? I was sitting in the back seat here waiting for you. Where's Denny? Got called away sudden like. Come on, get in. Said the spider to the fly. Says this to you. The barrel's loaded. Get in fast. Start it up now and get moving. Any particular direction? Straight ahead and out of town. Do you mind telling me what this is all about? Sure, I'll tell you. You're taking the first train tomorrow morning out of Purple Creek. Oh? We don't like any big city detectives snooping around. We can handle our own business in this air town. Business like Zach's murder this afternoon? Yeah, like that. I see. Tell me, what happens if I don't take your advice about leaving on the train tomorrow morning? Well, that's why we're going for this ride. There's a friend of mine waiting to talk to you. Only he don't talk with his mouth so much. This here friend of mine, he's going to convince you that it ain't so good for your health to hang around Purple Creek. Captain Drummond, you're in no condition to come out here. The doctor told you to rest. No, no, I'm all right, Denny. Besides, if I don't find what I want tonight out here at Devil Flats, I may never have another chance. Those two hoodlums convinced me they meant business. You still haven't told me what we're to do out here. So I haven't. And you haven't told me what we're looking for, if anything. Oh, we're looking for something, Denny, quite definitely. And uh, here's the spot where we look. This place? Yes, we're going down this mine shaft. Come on. Switch on your flash. It's pitch black in there. Keep the light beam up ahead of us away. Yes, sir. Uh, Captain Drummond. Yes? What in heaven's name do you expect to find in an abandoned ghost town mine shaft? Possibly gold. What? Gold, Denny. Devil Flats was once a boom town in the old days. This mine probably made a small town Midas out of its owner. Yes, and that owner is probably as dead as Midas is, and the mine is worthless as it looks. Really, sir, this is such a waste. Denny, of flash the beam over there to our right. What is it, sir? Just a moment. Here, look at it. A lamp. You'll notice it's battery operated. Modern. I believe the latest in mine lanterns. But how did a modern lamp get down here in this deserted shaft? Uh, sir, perhaps you were right. Gold. Perhaps. Remember I told you the ghost hoax may have been a means to keep prying eyes away from Devil Flat. Yes, I remember. Well, Denny, if you wanted to operate a gold mine in secret, what would you do? That's it, sir. There must be gold in this mine. That's the reason for it all. Carl Evans couldn't be frightened away from this ghost town, so he was killed. And Zack was murdered because he might have led me because to... Because he might have led you to me. Oh, sir. That's right, Drummond, to me. Well, Wilson. You had everything right. Even that part about the gold. You'll pardon me, Wilson, if I don't appear surprised to see you here. As a matter of fact, I rather counted on it. I am? Yes. You were the only one who knew I was on my way to talk to Zack about Evan's murder. You had him killed before he could reveal to me that you'd given him Evan's watch. I thought planting that watch was a good idea. You, uh, seem to be filled with good ideas, Wilson. You mean this gun? That's what I mean. You should have taken my boy's advice, Drummond, about getting out of town. I, um, uh, don't suppose I'll have another chance. You kidding? No, I suppose I won't. Uh, that gun, that's your latest idea, huh? No, I got a better one than this gun. You see, I expected you tonight, too, Drummond. It's all ready and waiting for you. We're through working this shaft. I'm closing it out tonight with a dynamite job. I just set it to go off in a few minutes. 
You two are going to be in here to enjoy it. Like that idea? Rather spectacular, isn't it? I do things in a big way. Turn around, Bobby. I gotta make sure you stay to see the fireworks. Well, we just soon forego that display, will you? You did it, sir. Good work. Come on, Danny. Hurry. We've got to get out of here fast. But, sir, Wilson back there. There's no time for him. We're going to get out of here alive to tend to the other members of the gang. We've got to run as fast as our feet can carry us. We made it. There's not a second to spare. You know, sir. Jenny, what? Get behind these rocks. Heavens, what now? Stay low. What's wrong, sir? Those men coming up the hill, see them? Yes, sir. Wait. They must be Wilson's men. Right. Get your revolver ready. We're going to be a reception committee of two. Well, then he take your last look at Devil Flax. With extreme pleasure, sir. This place is haunted by too many ugly memories. At any rate, we're alive to talk about it. Yes, but our escape from that mine shaft was just a little too close for comfort. Mm. Well, it's all over now. Wilson's dead, and we delivered his men to Sheriff. You know, I'll never quite forget their faces when we stepped out from behind the rocks to receive them. They went dead white. Was it any wonder? I suppose not. They thought they were looking at two new ghosts of Devil Flat. I'll be back in a moment to tell you about next week's story. Welcome back. This episode was missing the musical cues between scenes uh, for commercial insertions which so many listeners have taken issue with, so at least we could give you an episode that came to us in the condition of not having those cues. But it did have some very weird choices in terms of what parts of the story got exposited. For example, both Captain Drummond getting beat up and them capturing the henchmen was told through exposition. These are generally some of the more exciting parts of the story, so it's weird to have them treated that way. Also, Denny has some moments, but he felt a bit off. The degree to which he was leaning into the ghost thing made me feel like he was trying out to be a supporting character on Scooby-Doo. Well, listen our comments and feedback now, and we start with a couple of comments from our listener survey. And uh, the first one says, I love this show and all the oldies from back in the day. And then Timothy writes, what an enjoyable way to wind down the day and relax. And thank you so much for that comment, Timothy, from Seattle. And now it is time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank Jeremy. Jeremy's been one of our Patreon supporters since February 2016. Currently supporting the podcast at the Detective Sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Jeremy. And that will actually do it for today. If you're enjoying the podcast, please follow us using your favorite podcast software. And if you're enjoying the podcast on YouTube, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. We'll be back next Tuesday with another episode of Bulldog Drummond, but join us back here tomorrow for Broadway's My Beat, where... Sing Sing doesn't agree with you. Uh, it's Sing Sing, you inhale and exhale. It's the only way you know you're living. So, I make a deal. What kind of a deal, Tommy? I don't know. I'm saving it for the DA. After we talk, the DA and me, I got a feeling the state's going to forget all about my manslaughter rap and let me out of Sing Sing for good. Uh-huh. Uh, and to you, uh-huh, too. <laughs> Look, kid, when I finish spilling, some of the choicest names in the choicest circles are going to be doing things they never thought they could do before. Like getting sentenced, like like breaking rocks, like making license plates for automobiles. Ah, like uh, stash it, Tommy. Here, Lieutenant, I'll take off these cuffs between Tommy and me. There you are, Danny. Tommy's your prisoner. Uh, Danny, the car! <laughs> Tommy, don't be a fool. Come back here. Let's get him, Ellis. Ellis. <laughs> Danny! <laughs> I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. 
Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.